So it has been a fairly epic mission on Marty's WRX, but finally it is done and I'm about to see it for the first time. Marty's been busy at the paint shop and I can tell you he's very, very excited and so am I because it obviously doesn't start and run anymore. Well, it does. It just looks cooler to push it in, doesn't okay, it? Okay, it looks cooler to push it in. It looks amazing. It looks awesome, man. It comes so good. That's straight off the gun as well. That looks incredible. <laughs> So over here you can see is the Lego kit that today we have to make, but everything has been super, super organized. So over here on the bench, there is um, little Ziploc bags beep, 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 that have got every single thing labeled on what they do. So I think, what is the plan, Marty? What the are we gonna is, do? The plan is, Chong's painted everything. This is Chong, you met him last time. What a legend. Um, this is all the bits and pieces, right? Um, that he's painstakingly removed and kept all the bolts to. When I painted Supergramps, no bolts, none. No plastic clips, absolutely nothing. It was the biggest nightmare. So this is actually exciting because there's the bolt to put this stuff back together with. So what think, a treat, Martin. I think we just have at it. It's just fun Lego car day, really. What a treat. And hopefully by the end of the day, that looks like a WRX again. It's a huge amount of time and effort to repaint a car, so taking shortcuts on reassembly is not icing your cake, not sourcing your pie, and not shaking your sausage. The rubber trims are exposed to the same amount of sun and weather extremes as the paint, so they can become brittle over time. By bagging and labelling all the nuts and bolts, it ensures a painless reassembly, so your car works just as well as before you stuck it in the paint booth. One of the reasons getting your car painted is so expensive is the amount of time that it takes, well, and the skill as well of learning how to paint and panel beat and all that kind of stuff. This car is now straight as an arrow with all the repairs that Trung's done, um, which is amazing. But to do that, you do have to strip off a lot of the bits. So like the door handles, the locks, all the plastic and rubber parts. Trung slipped it, stripped this as minimally as possible because this part of the job is a headache. And a lot of projects actually get stuck at this point where people don't then put the car back together. Um, because it's been organized into baggies, that makes our life a lot easier. So pretty much just gonna pick away at it now and start to piece this back together. Um, some of these little plastic clips, some of them have a bit broken. They're 20 years old, they get brittle and hot. Uh, so we'll have to replace a handful of them. But generally this is actually, this is pretty good. So I don't foresee it being too difficult. One benefit of respraying a car is that you can lay the paint on thicker than the factory does, adding more coats of clear, which is both a protective layer and gives the paint its deep shine. This means you've got more leeway to buff and flatten it out for a perfect finish once the car is reassembled. We're each going to pick one end of the WRX and get to it. This, people, is why having a hoist is not always the best thing to have. You can't do this with you got a hoist. Manufacturers have taken to using glues and single-use trims as the need to respray cars completely becomes less and less common. Smash repairs are still very common, although the increased use of crash prevention technology is changing that industry too. This car is new enough that not all the clips and trims are boned, but not so new that we have to throw everything in the bin and start all over again. Overall, it's one of the easier cars out there to respray and reassemble. If you're bolting something like this up that has a lot of different screws in a lot of different locations, there's a lot of play in it, like a lot of movement, so it's a good idea to put all the screws in loosely, then push it exactly to where you want it to be to sort of get the tension just right, and then do it up, and that way you won't have huge gaps the whole way along. We temporarily attach the biggest panels back to the car for safe transport to the shed. But now they'll come off again so the various vents, lights and trim pieces can be reinstalled properly. These panel stands are cheap and so useful to prevent accidental damage to your fresh paint. And although it may look like a simple process, there's still a few traps. All right, so it turns out that these lights that I just put in uh, don't actually go in yet because they've got these little, um, I'll show you when I can get this, this out again. It's not coming out, I'll just show you anyway. They have to be attached first and the bar has to come off and then it all goes back on and the bar goes on. But it's tricky when you're putting back together a car that you haven't pulled apart yourself because you don't have any knowledge of how it came apart. So it's really organised with all the bags but you know I'm just 
there's a Subaru, so I haven't spent a whole lot of time with him and just working it out as we go. Glues are used throughout the car manufacturing process, some that set hard and some that stay pliable. Certain parts require resealing to prevent water leaks. The newer the car, the more likely it is to have glue rather than a traditional rubber gasket. All right, so with this little piece on, now it can go in, hopefully for the last time, but let's see how we go. Better. Repainting almost always means sacrificing your original stickers. There's a market for this in the smash repair business, so you can almost always get a remade set if not a genuine one. This car had really low springs in it, so the tyres were contacting the guards, guard liners and bumpers. This put extra pressure on the bolt with the bumper and the guard meet. So this is the perfect opportunity to reinforce to ensure that it doesn't happen again. Is on. Nice. Except for where it's not. When you paint a car, sometimes you sacrifice things like these little clips. Uh, these are little ones that screw in. Now these are specific to the two-door STI. Why is that a problem? Because they're really hard to get. But luckily, um, I was able to find some that Subaru Australia sell. Guess how much they are each. Guess how much that little, just that little screwing clip. Oh, oh that, one's that broken. one that's gone? Little plastic clip with a I screw I reckon they're that. just gonna smash you for them. Three bucks. Four, eight, nine. No, 12, 15. 13 dollars 13 dollars Each, Why? and I need six of them. What does it do? That's like, is that like, how much is that? 70 bucks worth or something of um? Six times 13, 72. Yeah, that was pretty good. No, it's not. Oh, who 78. knows? 78. It's 57. 64. Um, for those little clips to put my trims back on. So I'll just sit them in place for now so the car looks cool, but I need those three clips that go, screw in there, caslapo, back on the car. $78. Schmacken. Yep, okay. The schmackes. Schmacken? Schmacken. The schmackes. Schmacken, back Schmacken. on the car. Like most cars, the side skirts have a rubber gasket that prevents water and dirt getting inside the body kit. The original ones had shrunk from the hot sun, so I'm using some aftermarket replacements. This rubber has an adhesive backing, which is tricky to install, so a second set of hands or a mouth can help a lot. Which I could. Is Stop. this a new rubber? Yeah, it's too big. Like people will go, that's not the correct size, but it'll oh, work cool. just fine. Can't wait to read all about it. The correct size rubber you can sometimes get from manufacturers if the car isn't too old and they still make it. It will follow the exact shape of the body kit and fit perfectly. This is why it's all about taking care when you strip the car. It's really easy to get excited and just pull it apart and throw all the bolts into a box. That saves so much time. Side skirts, there's all the bolts for them. I put some new rubber gaskets along there. Now all I gotta do is fit them up to the car. All the plugs have come on and come out unscathed, which is awesome. Just gonna bolt these back in and we'll have some side skirts again. Although the two-door body shape looks quite different from a four-door sedan or wagon body WRX, they're actually very, very similar. The side skirts are the same, the wheelbase is the same, and it's like Subaru just stamped out a different side with one less door and welded it in place. This actually makes a lot of sense as it would have been a huge deal to retool an entire factory just for this particular model. Speaking of doors, now we can reassemble ours. Alright, this WRX is STI. going to get... It's a... It's an STI. It's, a, oh it's an STI. Don't become the Forester people who stick the STI badges on their SH9 Foresters. Said by the guy who owns a BRZ, and what are they? Tuned by STI, which is Mine's some not rubbish tuned by STI. That Mine's the tuned dealers by... put on. It's not legit STI. It's not an STI. The oh, WRX wait. is going together really well. I He's just right. said that. It and ain't then a... no BRZ though. 
I just looked at it and on the intercooler it literally says tuned by STI and I was like, Does it really? it's not tuned by STI like your crap. What does it say down here? Fuji Heavy Industries, Subaru WRX. No, does, does it really? Yeah, right oh, there. Worst. All right. It doesn't. Does it? No, oh, it doesn't. Good. It doesn't. Because it's just, a Tudor STI. Video. Anyway, this WRX is going together really well. It is kind of like Lego. I'm surprised actually, but it's due to the impeccable organization and everything in the baggies. We are getting through those baggies like there's no tomorrow. We are, we're getting through the bags. Um, there's one or two little clips that are broken, uh, but overall it's pretty, actually pretty good for a car that's been essentially completely stripped uh, that I'm waiting for. But I've also got my adhesive sealant. You know when this comes out that things are getting serious. The trims along the two windscreens, they're glued in. Yep. So they need to be re-glued in and then it's all to be left to dry. And in the meantime, I've got a few other things that I'd like to do. Do we also, do you glue on the drinks holder? Does it have a drinks holder? Yeah, over there. Oh, this? Yeah, the spoiler. No. Does that get glued on? Like, no. do, or does that get some kind of sticky something underneath it? It's got these little like um, lock nut things, but they always they, they break because yeah. they're in this really like weak plastic and as soon as you undo them, they snap. So we're going to have to like redo that. But does it have, is there something between that and the car? Like some rubber, some seal, something? Oh, this is like kind of a gasket thing, but I've got rubber we can use for that. Okay, cool. Mm. All right. It's well, coming together good, man. Continue good on. Martin, I like this car. Do you? Yeah, I Why? do. Why do I like it? Because it's two door and blue, like because it's two door and it's blue and it's kind of like a BRZ, but but full drive and has more grip and more makes more power, and would chop it in basically every single way except yeah. skids. We don't even need to do that. No, this is normally the that. point we go. So let's find out. We don't need no, to find out. We're not doing that. Of course, this is cooler than a BRZ. Of course it is. <laughs> um, it also costs four times as much well, money. Twice and is as four much. Four times yeah, as old. Twice as much. Five times as much. Twice as much. While springs and shocks don't seem to be related to painting a car, replacing them is the only way I'm going to prevent my brand new paint job being munched by the wheels and tyres. The suspension design didn't change much for the whole decade preceding this WRX, so we've got a bit of experience swapping them out. Luckily for us, it's one of the easiest cars out there for quickly removing struts. One odd thing is that the brake lines are locked into the factory struts and either need to be cut free or the brake lines disconnected. If you do the latter, you've got to bleed your brake system afterwards, and as we're throwing out the old shocks, we don't mind cutting them up. Alright, strut number one out. Now these are one of the reasons I had to paint the car in the first place. Uh, it was so low that every time you went over a bump and you had the wheels turned, you would just grind the crap out of the front of this bumper bar to the point where it was all damaged and the paint was flaking off, um, including hitting all up here, it wrecked the guard liners, and basically taking the things away from a WRX that make it really good, which is the fact you can bounce it off stuff, off gutters, and well, not off gutters, but jump it over stuff. It's a rally car, sort of. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually replace these springs. These are like super, super mega lows. I'm just going to put lows in, and on new KYB shocks, which have just arrived. If a car like this that's done like 200,000 k's or 160,000 k's or whatever it is, that suspension, if it's original, has been in there for 20 years or longer. And when these cars come out, people are always raving about how good the handling is. And then a lot of people will buy them and go, the handling sucks, then put coilovers in and go, yeah, the handling's now amazing. These things wear out. And you can go back to basically to how the car was supposed to be the day it was new by putting new factory replacement shocks in, which is my preference because you know, the engineers that make the car probably have a pretty good idea about how to make it handle. Uh, so there's that, but also I'm going to be adding slightly lowering springs, so I'm probably throwing all that out the window. Either way, by putting in a brand new shock absorber, and this is pretty much exactly what would have come from the factory, um, except it's brand new. rear shock should be ready to come out unless there's a bunch of other random stuff that we're not aware of that still has to be taken off underneath like sway bar and stuff like that. Hey Marty, I think this is about to drop man. Can you just grab the underneath of it? Yep. Yep, yep. All right, here we go. Yep, she's loose. There it goes. Awesome. Is that out? Yep, done. Awesome. Look at that. 160 something thousand k's of wear and tear and too much lowness.
out. That is it. Oh, look at it. That's the last corner out. Look how festy it is, man. It's far out. Oh, and it's blown. See, it's got leaking crap all over it. It took a little bit longer to get out than usual because we actually needed to use an angle guider on the front and then a little Ryobi rotary tool to cut out the brake line. But that is gone mm. and that's excellent because what that means so now good. is that we can replace it with actual new stuff to make it right as well as it should have back Matching. in the day. So that's KYB from the factory and put the same ones back in, which is pretty cool. Made in Japan, Martin. Yeah. Look at that. Yep. So we got to get some parts now, right, that we ordered from Subaru? Yeah, so some stuff's coming from Subaru, some you clips, can have that. Some clips of the body, car. which is why those mouldings aren't on yet. Yep. So the clips there and the clips on the top, which should be here, hopefully, the Sabo first thing in the morning. And then new strut tops for the front because they're all bone, and I had some spares and they're bone too. Wow. So it's no point putting ones in that grind because it doesn't feel good when you steer it. But yeah, man, good progress. Cool. Thank you for all your help. No worries. I suggest we go get some support. chili basil tofu oh my God. and then we sleep on it. Yep. Not on the, like, we eat it and then go to sleep in bed. <laughs> Not in, our own bed. in our own beds. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we were in Broken Hill, we had to share a bed together? Yeah. There was like no hotels left. We didn't yeah. even head to toe. We were just like, good night, <laughs> good night. Anyway, that's information no one needed. Uh, so we'll come back tomorrow and um, we'll finish it off. How nice is the paint, man? The paint's excellent. It's not quite hitting me yet because there's still heaps of stuff that's not connected. But once it's all back together and on the ground and everything bolted up, I'm, I'm excited to see what it looks like. That was a good day's yeah, shimmingy. That was fun. All right. Chili basil well tofu. Done. Chili basil tofu. Excellent. Getting on it.